how low level can a programming language become? Every time you hit compile, your code undergoes a metamorphosis. Your neat C logic, loops, conditionals, function calls is torn apart, scheduled, reordered, and rebuilt into the language your CPU truly understands. Assembly. In this video, we'll walk that path from human logic to opcodes and see why, even in 2025, some projects still handcraft assembly for maximum performance. One of the most striking recent examples, FFmpeg's rewrite of a filter function using AVX512 assembly, claiming up to 100 times speed up. Let's begin. You write int add int a and int b and then return a plus b. That looks straightforward, but your CPU doesn't see int, return, or plus. When compiled on an x8664 system v ABI, for instance, a typical translation might be something like this. Here's the meaning. EDI and ESI hold the two function arguments. The move EAX and EDI copies the first argument into the return register EAX. Add EAX and ESI adds the second argument. It then returns to the caller. That's the distilled version of your high-level code, a few atomic instructions, but real-world compilers often go further, inlining, eliminating calls, or combining operations. Under the hood, your C code is converted into many more elements. That includes stack frames, register allocation spills, addressing modes, jumps, and so on. When you write C, you don't manage several things explicitly. The compiler generates a prologue and epilogue, handles calling conventions, and orchestrates memory versus registers. All of that is hidden, but it's happening. So, because of that abstraction, you can write portable logic without thinking about microarchitectural detail, but that abstraction can hide inefficiencies, so understanding what's beneath helps. Consider this loop, a simple for loop iterating up to 10 and adding the iterating variable to sum. A compiler, unoptimized simple, might produce this much larger piece of assembly code that, at a glance, doesn't really look much like a loop. In fact, that maps precisely to actions such as initialize, compare, add, increment, and loop back. In optimized mode, the compiler may vectorize this loop, uh, converting it in order to execute multiple iterations per instruction using SIMD. Now that's automatic vectorization, but compilers can fail when pointer aliasing, control flow, or data dependencies are unclear. Um, assembly is tied to architecture. The instructions, registers, and calling conventions differ on x86, ARM, RISC-V, etc. One of C's great powers is portability. You can write logic once, and the compiler targets the proper instruction set. But performance-critical code sometimes requires dropping down to architecture-specific code. Here's where FFmpeg is a modern and dramatic example. The FFmpeg devs rewrote a filter function using handwritten AVX512 assembly and reported up to a 100 times speedup compared to a baseline C version. The 100 times gain applies only to that one function, not FFmpeg globally. On hardware lacking AVX512, the patch includes an AVX2 path that reportedly still yields about 65% performance improvement. Meanwhile, FFmpeg is also rewriting its SW scale module, responsible for scaling, color conversion, etc., to introduce a new x86 SIMD backend, reducing reliance on compiler auto vectorization. Early benchmarks of that SW scale rewrite show significant gains single threaded up to roughly two times overall and up to about 40 times in certain paths multi-threaded speedups up to 2.6 times overall, and in some code paths as much as 254 times. That said, some analysis and commentary caution that claims like 100 times faster often stem from comparing naive C implementations to highly tuned assembly plus vector code, and that a fair baseline C version might narrow that gap. So the FMPEG example is real and illustrative. 
but it must be presented with proper context and skepticism. Let's move to function calls and stacks. Let's look at this line. Int result equals add 5 and 7 under the hood. 1. The caller places arguments in registers or on the stack per calling convention. 2. A call instruction jumps to add. 3. Inside add. The compiler may push a frame, allocate locals, spill registers, etc. 4. It then returns and pops the return address from the stack. 5. The return value sits in a standard register. Nested calls build a call stack. If recursion or local allocations go too deep, you risk overflowing the stack, hence stack overflow. Understanding this helps explain function call overhead, why inlining matters, and the cost of deep recursion. Now, on optimization. In older eras, expert assembly programmers often beat compilers by manually tuning loops, register usage, and instruction scheduling. But today, compilers like GCC and LLVM are extremely advanced. They do instruction scheduling to avoid pipeline hazards, strength reduction, constant folding, and algebraic simplifications, loop unrolling, inlining, and interprocedural optimization. Automatic vectorization, SIMD, when possible. Microarchitecture specific tuning, selecting instructions match to target CPU. So, in many cases, compiler generated assembly is on par with or even better than what many humans would write for general code, but compilers don't always have enough information, data shapes, runtime behavior or be able to reason about aliasing, branches, or non-trivial dependencies. Hence, in hotspots like video filters, cryptography, codecs, signal processing, humans still write assembly or use intrinsics. Even if you never write assembly yourself, understanding what your code becomes is powerful. You'll see why some operations are unexpectedly slow, why memory patterns matter, and how abstractions map to actual machine behavior. When you realize that each if, for, and return compiles into their corresponding assembly translation, you begin to think more clearly about performance and optimization. In the end, C and assembly aren't antagonists. They are collaborators. C gives structure and clarity to your logic. Assembly gives motion and control to the silicon. The compiler is the translator converting one into the other, optimizing whenever possible. When you write C, you're speaking to both humans and machines. When you understand what it becomes, you gain insight. When you write assembly, you speak directly to the machine. So the next time you hit compile, remember, your code becomes a living stream of instructions flowing across billions of transistors executing your logic in real time. That's what your code really becomes. So what do you think? Are you glad assembly is abstracted away from us with C? Or do you think we should do more low-level hands-on coding with assembly? Leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more programming deep dives from the techie shop. If you like this video, watch this video here for more tech talk.